I'm about to rock. It's the KLH Show, starring me, KLH. I'm telling you, you better hold on to something. Let's go! What is going on, Waterbury? It's me, your man, KLH. Back in your TV screen here to save the world 30 minutes at a time. Word up! Yeah. So I'm back here kicking it on the couch. You know, it's me, you, you know, just kicking around a couple of subjects, how we do. So I know you at the top of every show, I want to acknowledge all of you for making this choice. I know you have a lot of you in choices, and you made this one, and I appreciate you for that choice. And also on YouTube, you have a gazillion choices and you stop by to see me. I appreciate you for all your time. And as always, if you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, whatever, get at me on Facebook. Get at me on Ken Harge on Facebook. Get at me on email. And, uh, you know, you know, email me, email me. You know what it is. K-L-H-O-U-D-1 at comcast.net that way I could print it and read it on the air all right all right so I'm going to get into a few different subjects today and I uh, I'm getting parched already so I'm gonna ask you to hold that thought while I get a quick glass of water <laughs> TV production here I go Ah. All right, so yes, I want to kick around a couple of different subjects and you know just let you know where I'm at on a couple of things. The first thing I want to talk about is a show is a, a topic that I did a show on a little while ago about health care, but because we're in the thick of the primary or the uh, the presidential campaign season and the Republican National Convention has started, it'll be on tonight, it was on last night. I just want to touch on it again. All the Republicans, one of their talking points is we are going to repeal Obamacare. Obamacare is is draining us and and it's costing the government all this money and he's he's gutting Obama's gutting Medicare in order to pay for Obamacare. I want to tell you folks something and I hope you'll do your own research to find out I did my own research to find out Republicans that are saying this are liars or they're stupid and just taking uh, people's word for what Obamacare is really about. Fact of the matter is any of the money that Obama wants to take from Medicare, he's taking it from hospitals and, uh, and insurers so that that money can be he's taking waste out of the system they want to make it sound like uh your grandmother is not going to be able to get her pain medication or something because of obamacare it's a lie he's taking out if inefficiencies out of the program and then using those in obamacare which has built into it built into the law cost saving measures it has built into it reviews of the insurance coverages that are offered under Obamacare to make sure that coverage is as inexpensive as possible. Republicans who say it's a horrible thing are liars, man. They are liars, lying, lying, lying. So please, don't go repeating this stuff. Find out for yourself what it really is, and I'll tell you what the truth is as far as, as in, in my opinion. I think that Republicans hate Obamacare so much because Obamacare beat them to the punch and he accomplished something for the American people and the Republicans can't stand the thought that this guy did something good for America. Now I have said before and I'll say again, I am not an Obama Kool-Aid drinker. In other words, I'm not going to just swallow whole anything that Obama says. In fact, I'm quite critical of a lot of things that Obama has done and has not done. But as far as health care, it is a lie to say that it is going to destroy this country. It is a lie to say that you're going to lose your own health care over it. It is a lie 
to say that it's socialist medicine is nonsense, man. And it's high time that people start saying that to these politicians so maybe they'll start being honest with us. Also, you are going to hear a lot, and we heard it last night on the Republican National Convention from Rick Santorum. You hear it on TV ads, and in all the Republicans, it's another one of their talking points that <clears throat> President Obama wants a dependency society. And one of the hallmarks of that is that he has taken away the work requirements from welfare. Every single solitary independent fact checker that has looked at that has said that the Republican claim is flat out wrong. And yet, when you challenge them on it, they wiggle around, they squirm around like snakes and try to ignore the fact. Uh, Mitt Romney even had the gall to say that, well, fact checkers have their own agenda. And you could find a fact checker to say what you want. However, they have not been able to find any independent fact checkers to say that their claim is correct. So when it comes to the claim that President Obama has removed work requirements from welfare, they're saying that because they think you're stupid. And they think they can just make up stuff and that you'll believe it. And the problem is that a lot of people are believing it. A lot of people are being sheep and they're allowing themselves to be led along without looking into the facts. Don't let any of these politicians, Republicans or Democrats, treat you like you're stupid. Do your own research before you go around talking about it. And I think there is also an element that of, uh, of racial, I'm not even gonna say racist, but a, a racial element, because President Obama is black. The people that are latching onto this claim that he's taken away work requirements are white working class people. And so rather than saying, don't vote for this guy because he's black, they bring up these stereotypes of black people who are shiftless and, and losers and they're just draining the system, taking working taxpayers' money away from them. It's a lie, people. It's a lie. It is a lie, lie, lie. All right? So, next on the <laughs> docket is... Uh, I'm going to stay political for a minute. People who are supporting Obama because he's black. I know it's going to get some people uncomfortable. I know a lot of people, some of my friends will be mad at me for it. But I'm telling you how I see it, man. That's what I do here. I was on Facebook and after watching the or actually during watching the, the Republican uh, convention, I said that I'm riding with Obama because he passed health care. However, I'm mad at him for some other things. That led to a big, long discussion. At one point, I had a woman who I only know from Facebook, which is most of the people that I'm friends with on Facebook. <laughs> but... She said at one point that she wanted to hold her head down in shame because of what I was saying about Obama. And I think, well, she doesn't know whether I'm a registered Democrat or Republican, so I don't think it was that she was ashamed that I was a Democrat dissing another Democrat. The only thing I could figure, since she was black, and the other people who are jumping down my back uh, over what I had to say were black. I think that they that she was ashamed of me as a black person for not standing behind another black person. Now I think having pride in your in your culture, having pride in your ethnicity. In your national heritage if you know what that is unfortunately most black people don't we know we're from Africa but that's about it 
I think that pride in who you are is a beautiful thing. I was proud of President Obama when he got nominated and even more so when he got elected. It, it's a beautiful thing. I had written a blog piece about it uh, shortly after he got elected. I think it's something that the whole country, even if you don't uh, believe in his politics, I think it was a, a beautiful, outstanding milestone for our country, without a doubt. However, to continue through one term into the second term, right in with this president simply because he's black, I think is part of the problem. Most black people that I've talked to, in fact, I'd be hard pressed to think of even a single black person that I've spoken to that had anything but good things to say about Obama. And the fact of the matter is, he has failed to do a whole bunch of things that he said he would do. And the first line of defense people use when I bring this up is that, oh, the Republicans are obstructing him, or how in the world is he going to get all this done in four years? Now, it is true that the Republicans have been obstructionists, without a doubt. The Republicans have tried to do everything they possibly could to prevent this president from being successful. That is true. We were in one of the worst financial binds that this country has ever been, second only to the Great Depression. And so a lot had to be done. All this is true. But it is also true that President Barack Obama is a very, very smart man. I think even his critics would agree to that. It is true that President Obama has studied and aspired, has studied congressional procedure. He knew a lot about what was going on. He did not come into the job as president with his eyes closed and as a naive little boy. He knew fully well that when he got into office, he would encounter opposition. And people said, oh, well, because he knew he was going to be opposed, is that good enough reason that uh, the Republicans would do everything to obstruct him and still expect him to get something done. My point is that because he knew he should have made promises based on what he knew he would face. Because he knew that he would get opposition from the Republicans, he should have made really good and sure that he would promise things that he knew he could accomplish. Instead, he promised us the world. He promised us this hope and change. He promised us that he would uh, reduce the deficit significantly within his first term. Failed at that. The deficit has only increased. He promised that he would get unemployment, I believe, down to 7% or 7.5%, somewhere in that range. Um, unemployment is at 8% or 8% plus, even a little higher in certain parts of the country, but on average it's 8% in that range. The point is, is that unemployment is higher than he said it would be. He even said if he didn't get those two things done, that that we should be looking for a new president. And now all of a sudden, we want to talk about the Republican opposition. It doesn't work that way. If you say it, you should do it. Excuse me. He said that he would close Guantanamo Bay, the detention center down there, in his first year of presidency. He has not done that. It's, all he has to do is write a presidential order. He doesn't have to give votes for that. He could say, close it down, and they have to do it. Now, 
as it turns out, it's hard to close close Guantanamo Bay. But again, President Obama is not a, a, a naive, uneducated uh, novice. He's a very educated, very sophisticated man. He sh even if he didn't know how hard it was to close that, he should have known. I expect any of our elected officials to do what they say they will do. He said he would have one of the most uh, transparent, if not the most transparent administration ever. It's been anything but that. This thing with Eric Holder and the papers that the Congressional Committee is looking for regarding the Fast and Furious gun thing with Mexico. They've been holding out on papers to the point where Eric Holder has been held in contempt of Congress and they're considering uh, bringing charges against him, which would be incredible. He said that hearings on bills that are going through Congress would be televised on C-SPAN. That ain't happening either. All this transparency that he talked about, nope, it's not happening. And rather than him blaming the Republicans, I want to see him out there fighting. I want to see him out there with extraordinary ideas to get this country back on track, track financially. And I don't see that. I see him with some things, you know, to bring in the stimulus and to hire teachers and firemen and build roads. You know, that's all good if you're in one of those three industries. Problem is everybody's not in those industries. Everybody's not a teacher or a fireman or a policeman or a highway construction worker, right? Now, granted, those people's jobs are very important, but they're important to them and their families. Those jobs aren't going to make any difference for me. And for most Americans, and to lower you know taxes a thousand dollars a year, that's not going to change my life. That's not going to change most Americans' lives. I want to see our president go balls to the wall and fight for us. That's what I want to see, and I don't see it. And I think that it is is ridiculous that. So many people are riding on his coattails without a whole lot of substance behind it. Now, to be clear, he did do some things. He passed health care, which I think is a major thing. I think it's a great thing. It could be better, but it's still a major, major accomplishment. He brought home the, the fighting troops from Iraq. It's a great thing. You know, he passed Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I'll be honest with you, I don't really care because I'm not gay. So there's nothing for me to tell or ask. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. He's done some things, but he hasn't done enough. And he hasn't done enough on the, the most important things regarding getting our economy on, on track. So now I'm mad at him and I'm going to be critical because he hasn't done things he said he would do. And I just would think it would be really refreshing to see all people, including black folk, hold him to a higher standard. When we hold our politicians to a higher standard for long enough, we'll start to see changes. But if we're simply sticking with somebody because they're black or because, uh, you know, they're an Italian, if it happens to be an Italian politician or, or because they're a Democrat or Republican, that just keeps us stuck. It divides us. And what we need to, what we need to do, excuse me, is really look at what are they doing for us? and make sure that the standard is held high because especially the president is the most powerful job there is. If you're not going to hold him to a high standard then, then we're really screwed. So I'm looking for and calling on all people to hold our politicians to a higher standard 
And that goes for Republicans as well who are saying, that's right, that's right. That's why we're going for Romney. Well, Romney's not that impressive. Romney is a guy who made a lot of money for himself and his company, which is an outstanding thing. So I'm sure he could teach a lot of people things about how to start a company and how to make money. That doesn't mean he could be a great president. When he was the governor of Massachusetts, his record's pretty horrible. That's why he doesn't talk about it that much. His uh, Romney Care health care plan in Massachusetts was part of what was a uh, a preamble to Obamacare. That's why I didn't talk about it that much. When it comes to jobs, Massachusetts was number 48 in the nation. That's why he doesn't talk about it that much. So you Republicans should be holding your nominees to a higher standard too. And the fact of the matter is that Mostly everybody did not want Romney. And then all the other front runners, for one reason or another, started saying crazy things or doing crazy things, and they started blowing themselves out of the picture one by one by one. Trump, you know, he's nuts. He's saying all this crazy birther stuff, so he removes himself. He gets removed from the equation. Then there's Herman Cain, and, you know, he's saying crazy stuff about, uh, you know, putting up an electric fence and killing uh, you know Mexicans as they come over the border and stuff like this and then it turns out he's got multiple uh, claims of sexual harassment against him and then he's interviewed and he can't think of uh, certain uh, geopolitical scenarios that exist he he's not well versed in world affairs and you have to be as president so he blows himself out of water then uh santorum comes in and by then romney he's got all this dough and he's got an organization and he's work 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 working and santorum he said some crazy things he's a really radical white right wing conservative and he has some good things to say but he has some really crazy things to say too and i think it was a combination between that and the fact that Romney had such a, uh, I'm looking at my timing here, Romney had such a, a strong organization throughout the country and he was either able to weather the storm. So now we have Romney as the Republican nominee when most Republicans did not want him. And now all of a sudden, Romney's the greatest thing ever. He's a great guy. He's this and that. And, and he can lead this country and all this Let's be honest with each other, man. Let's be honest. That's all I'm asking is let's be honest. Let's be real about what's really there. Let's be real about how capable Romney really is. And if you were dissing him before, don't get up saying he's the greatest thing ever now. Santorum couldn't stand Romney in the primaries. And now he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I think he's going to be great. Come on, man. It's the same thing as people... Riding with Obama because he's black is wrong, 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 I tell you. All right. All right. So, next thing I want to touch on a little bit is when you are frustrated, when you are upset, when you're mad at somebody, when you are disappointed at somebody, when you are stressed out over a situation, it is generally because you are wishing that things were different than they are. And as long as you're wishing that things were different than they are, and you're stressing over that fact, your frustration, your anger, your heartbreak, your disappointment, all that will continue. What we have to do is what they do when people are going in for treatment of alcoholism or drug abuse. The first thing you have to recognize is where you're at. So to use the alcohol, alcoholic um, metaphor, the first thing, the first step in the road to uh, uh, recovery is to recognize that you're an alcoholic. You can't ignore it. You can't. 
You can't just wish it, it didn't exist. It does exist. And it's by accepting where you're at that you can, based on reality, move forward. It's the same when you're upset with a person or a situation. In a relationship, if a person has done something to you that upsets you, or is doing something to you that is upsetting to you, to just get mad is not a solution. If you're a woman whose husband is abusing you, to simply be upset and wishing that it was other than it is doesn't change your situation. If a friend says something to you that's offensive to you, arguing with that person about why they did it and you this and you that and you blah, 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 is not going to change your situation. What will change the situation is first recognizing that the hands you have, the cards you have, are the cards you have. Now, based on reality, you can proceed with some kind of logic, some kind of sensibility, rather than simply being mad, which is just going to make the other person, if we're talking about relationships, it's just going to make the other person defensive and you get nowhere. You've probably experienced that. I know damn well I've experienced it a whole lot. And so when I talk about things like these, I'm talking about things that, usually I'm talking about things that I'm in the midst of myself. And so I just wanted to encourage people out there that when you're in a relationship situation, let's, let's kind of limit it to relationships. The first thing is to recognize that you are where you are. Or if your condition is is undesirable, like you're you're broke, you know, and a lot of people are broke in this recession, to just be upset because you're broke doesn't change your being broke. What you have to do is accept that this is where I am. Now, what can I do to get out of the situation? What can I do to move myself forward? And it, I've talked about it in the past that the thing that one of the things beyond not accepting the cards that you have is looking at the situation as a as a big gigantic problem you have to break it down and if you break it down into small chunks you can accomplish a small thing and another small thing and another small thing and another and so on and so forth and eventually you can get to where you want to be so you can get that relationship repaired or you can decide, I'm going to get out of a relationship. But wishing it's just wishing that it was different than it is or being mad because it is what it is gets you nowhere. So, accept where you're at, accept the cards you have, and then do something to get some better cards. Do something to move yourself forward. Word. We are at the end of another show, and as always, we got to get our drinky drink on. Yeah. Got it right here, ready to rock your. We got Maker's Mark, one of my favorites. It's a great Kentucky bourbon. And bourbons are only made in Kentucky. Just a little fun fact for you. If it doesn't come from Kentucky, it's not bourbon. So, also, if you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, you know what it is. One more time, right at the bottom of the screen. Boom! KLHOUD1 at Comcast.net. Get at me, all right? So, here we go. May I live to be 100 years. May you live to be 100 years in a day. Peace. Oof. It's strong, but it's good. Peace.